Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Rockman Power Hour, a podcast where we talk to the most interesting people in the world of pop culture. Uh, I am joined by my co-host, Ryan Stick. Ryan, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I feel like anti-flagging today. <laughs> well, we will do just that because we have the lead singer and guitar player from the band Anti-Flag that will be joining us on the show today. Uh, looking forward to talking to Justin Sane. They've got a brand new album out called Lies They Tell Our Children, and uh, it's their 14th record, and I'm really excited to have uh, Justin from Anti-Flag joining us today on the show. But before we get too far, let's thank everybody that helps to keep the Rockman Power Hour train chugging along uh first off our title sponsor heartbeat hot sauce uh, they are an incredible hot sauce company out of thunder bay ontario we are quite big enthusiasts of the hot sauce and ryan you just received your new order are you excited i heard you couldn't you don't have it yet right like the delivery guy showed up and you weren't there i um you know when you really want something yeah it takes its time yeah, <laughs> that that's like one of those things where if i was just like i hate hot sauce i i i, I would find it in Everywhere. my closet. <laughs> yeah. I would yeah. find it in my jacket pocket. But, you know, just because I've been just waiting for this, gl the gloriousness of Heartbeat Hot Sauce to show up. You missed the delivery. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I got my new order. Really grateful. And uh, I want to thank everybody at Heartbeat Hot Sauce for uh, sponsoring the podcast. If you haven't tried it yet, do yourself a favor. Use our promo code ROCKMAN20. This is uh, what it will look like when it shows up. What's great about this, and I didn't realize, uh, it took me a while until I realized, the bottles they use look like tattoo ink bottles. And it was yeah. when I went to Melissa's place to get a tattoo. I saw all of her ink, and I'm like, is that Heartbeat Hot Sauce? She's like, no dummy that's tattoo ink that's what they do that's what's unique about them I'm like ah i get and it only now. after consuming two bottles of ink did you realize that it wasn't <laughs> it doesn't hot taste sauce. like dill pickle habanero oh. <laughs> anyways heartbeat hot sauce great hot sauce company out of thunder bay ontario use our promo code rockman 20 and get 20 percent off your entire order also a big thanks to studio house designs now i am not wearing a studio house design shirt and i will tell you why in a moment but ryan is rocking the faculty shirt uh i live in studio house as everybody that knows me knows, um, I absolutely love their stuff. So thank you to Cody and uh, Studio House Designs. And thank you to AKG for uh, rocking us these great microphones and headphones. Now, I want to tell you about my t-shirt really quickly because, uh, as you know, I'm a big Steely Dan fan. Mm -hmm. I'm a big Billy Joel fan. Took Nathan to uh, see Billy Joel on his 16th birthday um, yeah. at Madison Square Garden. And I'm a big Black Flag fan. And I never thought I would see a Billy Joel Black Flag mashup. And look at this. <laughs> so if you know the album cover, Slip It In, this is a take on that in with the black flag bars and the piano and the uh, black flag logo says Billy Joel, Keeping the Faith. You know the song, Keeping the Faith? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, now, if you can, Ryan, can you just throw up on screen? I just want to show people the original album cover of Slip It In. Yeah. And, uh, and then you see my shirt. So it's just... So there's a company called FSG and the guy named Nathan that designed this. And um, I, I had picked up one of, uh, actually, I think during our Christmas, when we talk about Christmas, our gifts, I'd gotten one of those Katie Lie, that Steely Dan hat that Nathan had designed with FSG. And um, I wore it and uh, I was like, I love your stuff. He goes, pick a shirt. I want to send it to you. And um, he also does these great, great, uh, I want to show you this really quick. I'll be right back. So Steely Dan have this song called um, Deacon Blue. Okay. And in the uh, in the lyrics, they go drink scotch whiskey all night long, dun, dun, and die behind the wheel. So he made a bumper sticker that says, "Don't mind me. I've been drinking scotch whiskey all night long, and I plan on dying behind the wheel." <laughs> <laughs> so I tried to order one of these stickers from FSG, and because we're in Canada, and I guess they use one of those automatic, um, you know, yeah, yeah. shipping things. The sticker was like six bucks and the shipping was 17. So I reached out to Nathan. I'm like, I want to support you, buddy. But, and he's like, pick a shirt. I'll send you a sticker. So um, shout out to them. We love Studio House Designs. Don't get me wrong. But every yeah. once in a while, um, someone will send you something. You got to give them a shout out. So thank you for this. This is really, really cool. Uh, and I'm, uh, you know, it, you know, when someone touches on these two polar opposite things and they mash them together, um, it's like that Men at Work Metallica mashup of, uh, down under and um and i forget what song it was enter salmon and they just put them together well th that's one of those things so. yeah i heard this uh i heard danzig mother mixed with um a disco song and it's arguably the best version <laughs> of both well, of the songs when it's put together 
Or or when Corey Taylor or Corey Taylor's voice is over the Justin Bieber song, you can see it on YouTube. It's like yeah. say Justin Bieber, uh, Slipknot. It's awesome. It's like I'll take my time, but yeah. it's like the yeah. music is baby, baby, and it's yeah, well, exactly it's awesome. So it's that. Yeah. So that is exactly this on a T-shirt. That's exactly what this is. So uh, shout out to Nathan, who's got a great name. And of course, my son's name's Nathan and uh, FSG. Appreciate that. Okay. Dude. So we're talking to Justin from uh, Anti-Flag. Uh, I really loved this conversation. It was really fun because the sun was going down in Montreal and he was in, I think he was in Pittsburgh and his sun was going down where he was. And then this crack of light came in and it was just, it was a fun conversation. It illuminated him. It illuminated him. I, I, I like Anti-Flag a lot. Um, I like, I thought him and I had a lot in common and we just had a, we had a really nice conversation. It was just fun. It felt like two, two buddies chatting. Um, and I've chatted with him before, but it was, um, it was great to catch up with him again. Again, the new album is out now. It's our 14th record and uh, they're going to be hitting the road everywhere. So make sure you uh, check them out on tour. But right now let's uh, go to our conversation with Justin from Anti-Flag. Well, thanks for coming on the show. I really, really appreciate yeah. it. Uh, you and I have chatted before. Uh, I had you on my radio show uh, quite okay, a few years dope. ago. I actually have your number on my phone. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I remember when you came to uh, when you came to town, you're like, hit me up. But um, what I what I love about this band, uh, there's a lot about this band that I like. But I remember you guys were the first ones to really call out Trump. Um, mm. I remember you were the ones that had that shirt with the hood on them. And that stupid okay. look on his face. And I think it was like, that might've been 2016. Okay. And I remember you guys were early on the train for that. And, uh, yeah. and I don't want to get political because so much stuff has happened and I'm not even sure, in that sure. space anymore, but I remember thinking to myself, they knew. <laughs> well, and yeah, not to, if you don't want to get political, that's fine with me, but I will say like it, for me, it wasn't that hard because he literally announced his candidacy by making racist comments, right. you know? And then uh, over time, it just like it just got worse. You know, it was like anti-Semitic, anti-Chinese, you know, and then yeah. now you see like the result of that. Like we in our hometown of Pittsburgh, we had a horrible shooting at a synagogue. You know, um, when Trump wanted to go there, they were like, we don't want you like yeah. you're part of the reason this happened. Like uh, you just see like Asian crimes in America. He called covid the asian flu the chi yeah. oh, you know he actually called it the chinese flu like just so blatantly racist and that was one of the things where immediately i was like no like uh, yeah. we don't we don't need you know no politician that's going to be president is going to be a person i'm probably going to be a fan of but we don't <laughs> need a person with the biggest bully pulpit in the world expressing open racism and anti-Semitism, et cetera. hundred percent, hundred percent. And that's just, you know, that has nothing to do with politics. That has to do with just human decency. And, I agree. Uh, so I, I, I agree. call you, I, I I totally feel you on that. For me- Well, and I'm glad that we were on the same page. With that, oh, we so were, we were. I mean, you know, I'm exactly. from Canada, so things are, we're, we're a little bit like kind of standing away watching, you know, it's like, it's like living, uh, it's like living above uh, a meth head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're looking down, you're like, Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Train wreck down there. Let's not, let's not do that. Yeah. But, um, but I, that was, that was my, I, I remember thinking, I love this band for their integrity and for being able to say that before, you know, whenever somebody's on to something a little bit quicker than other people, um, I always have a lot of respect for that. And, uh, cool. and it's, uh, and then I've also have a really good friend of mine, Ron English, who is a pop culture uh, artist and he makes vinyl toys and stuff. And he made these, which I thought were hilarious <laughs> with this removable toupee, <laughs> Trump, the orange <laughs> elephant. And, uh, and I was like, oh, oh, that's man. great. <laughs> so, Good for uh, him. but I just wanted to get that out of the way because, um, I, I just remember sure. it was one of the first things I, I thought of when I, when I, um, when, when I thought, you know, remember I was speaking to you, I was like, yeah, I remember that shirt. And I remember wanting to get one. And I think I even reached out to you and you're like, I'll save you one, but oh. Your, your <laughs> new record came out this year. Um, yeah. This is, rec is it record number 10, 11? You know, I guess we're, we, we are technically calling it number 13, but you know, who knows? There's been all kinds of stuff, but let's just go with 13. It's a badass number. So that's kind of where we're, where we're going to put it. How does it feel to be, to be, you know, putting new music into the world now? Um hitting the road like all that stuff is it is it the kind of thing where it's you're just happy that things are getting going again 
Um, or is it, is it more like, oh man, like I had, I had a chance to have like a bit of a pause from everything. And because uh, a lot of people I speak to that, that are coming out of these last couple of years are saying either they're really, really excited to get back to it, or they're realizing that they might like other things in life besides music and touring. It's both. It's both. I mean, I'm, I'm on one hand, we're coming up in 30 years of the band. Um, right. and I'm so grateful for that. That's like unreal honestly and like making a new record putting that out there's people that care that's really cool you know sure. it's like i'm really grateful for that and um in some ways enjoying the band now more than ever because i don't take it for granted at all you know right. i i realize that you know the days you just never know um in in time you know you never know what's going to happen next right so I really have been enjoying it. We were just uh, right before the record came out. We did just like a short a acoustic run in Germany. Yeah. And um, it was mostly just because the record was coming out and we weren't going to be in Germany for a very long time. And Germany's sort of been like a second home to the band. And we thought, well, look, we're not going to be there for such a long time. Germany has been such a important part of the band. We should go do something special there. Um and then just like going from city to city and like running into old friends and all the people and experiencing people who've been coming to our shows for 20 years over there. And um, same thing happens when we come to Canada. And luckily, we'll be in Canada again, like very soon. So yeah. um, just everywhere we go, we you know, there's people that are special to us. And we've had just made some amazing relationships. And that's a big part of it, too. Like if the band went away tomorrow, I would miss that part of it. Sure much you know and never mind like the live part of it um so but yeah i mean of course you know i i'm by nature like um not uh what's what's the word i'm looking for here uh, i'm a loner in a lot of ways you know right. so like um i'm not a person that uh you know i'm good on my own and like so in that respect like going away and the pandemic wasn't hard on me as far as like feeling isolated and things slowed down and i uh, did get a chance to like reconnect with um you know just with like trying new things and that kind of thing so yeah i mean i i, I was kind of had a foot in both worlds but honestly like if i if i'm honest about it i would much rather things be like they are now i'd much rather be getting out there and oh yeah uh, but i'm getting older so i just feel like hey i want to experience as much of life as i can while i can listen i i just turned 52 um yeah i hear you on that it's um it's crazy how the one commodity that matters the most to me now is time right the rest right. of it is you know it, it can all come and go but time is what is is what i'm kind of obsessing on yeah, you know, because I'm closing in on 50. And like, honestly, yeah. I think I'm doing it gracefully, because yeah. like, I'm, I'm still excited about so many things. And my attitude about new things is really open, you mm -hmm. know, like more open than I've ever been in my life. So but because it is, and I, I feel that, like you're talking about, there's, there's, you know, the, the main part of my life has probably been lived. Yeah. So I'm like, I got to get out there and get into this stuff <laughs> that is exciting me. And like every day, I want to make every day count. So um, yeah, I feel you on that 100%. It's kind of weird when you think about it, because I, I try to explain it to to my kids and to, and to younger people. And I go like, imagine it's a gas tank. You know, you start off and you're like, if it's like, let's say it's zero to 80. I'm saying, let's, we live to 80. We probably will live a little bit longer, knock on wood, but it's it's like you're past the halfway point now when you have yeah you, when you pass 40 and you're like oh wait i'm on the decline now yeah. and i don't feel that way because i get right. excited about things like you're saying my passion for new music my pa you know yeah. um on my radio show the other day a, a new band came in that we've been playing for a while and they played on the show they're 20 years old they write incredible songs and they were so excited all wide-eyed yeah coming into the studio yeah. going wow this is amazing and it never gets lost on me you know um, yeah. And my excitement of having a new band come in and me being able to track their success. It, it, yeah. It, it, yeah. 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 It it's a great, it's a great thing. And I think that's what, you know, a lot of people say, what's the key to staying young? I think it's still being passionate about stuff. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, just being excited about finding new things. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, but I do realize like, because there are a lot of places I'd like to travel to that I've never gone to. And I, you know, there's always been this like belief in me that, well, I'll get to someday. Sure. And now I'm like, you know, man, I probably need to just start planning some shit out. Same with like, there are different bands and artists that I would like to see. And I'm like, oh, I'll see them someday. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know what? Maybe I, I'm going to start like checking out like bands that I want to see and like, where are they going to be? And maybe make yep. it a, like a trip. Like That's, I'm going to, it's a, it's a place I want to go. It's a band I want to see. That'll be part of what I'm going to do. That's such a, um, we're so in the same headspace for that. And there's certain artists that, you know, with artists passing away and with, you know, with people just genuinely getting older and especially in the rock world, there, you know, certain people that you're, they're just not there anymore. And one yeah. of the, one of the ones I regret not seeing was David Bowie. Um, wow. I had a few yeah. opportunities, never got to see Bowie. Right. Uh, and now I'm like, you know, an artist that'll come to town that normally I might go, ah, I'll be here. Like Motorhead was the perfect example. Motorhead was the kind yeah. of band that came every year. Right. And how many times did Motorhead come to Pittsburgh and you were like, yes, see him next time. Right. Honestly. Yeah. Luckily I went once and, um, but you're right. They, they fucking came all the time. And yeah. now what I would do for a Motorhead show, you know what I mean? Sure. So it's, it's, yeah. I, I, yeah. and it's, and it's funny how sometimes it can be far reaching. Like Madonna's coming to Montreal this summer and I'm not, I mean, you know, I, I, cause of my age, I grew up in the eighties. There were some iconic Madonna stuff and I'm going to go see her yeah. because it's like, when am I ever going to like, when is this going to happen again? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do. And, I do. And a lot of my friends are like, what are you doing to go see Madonna spending this money? Like, who cares? Like yeah. life is too short to not experience things. So let me ask you, who would be the artist that you would say you miss that you regret? Well, Bowie is a great one. I mean, yeah. I, and, and it never honestly even occurred to me to go see David Bowie, which yeah. Now I I think like wow I think part of the reason I didn't bother is because I'd had a lot of friends who had seen him and were like he doesn't play any of the old stuff yeah like they, they yeah. were never happy with the set you know and so I was like well yeah if he's if he's not gonna play anything of Ziggy Stardust why you know right. kind of yeah. and um, I I totally blew it with Joe Strummer. I had mm. many opportunities to see Joe Strummer. I always believed he would be there, and then bam, yeah. he dropped out of a heart attack. So that would that would be one for me. Luckily, I did see the Ramones like a lot. Wow. You know, like we were you were a little older than me, but like we were teenagers. The Ramones were on tour. Same thing as like Motorhead. The Ramones All came the through like twice a year. Yep. You know, and and luckily I went and it was a lot of fun. So I, I kept going. And um, and so I'm really glad that, you know, that's a band that I got to experience. Like Guar too. Guar. Oh, nice. yeah. Guar. Totally. Totally. Yeah. yeah. When I was in high school, Guar would play in Pittsburgh. Yeah. At least once a year. <laughs> at least once a year. Um, by the way, this is like silly to bring up. I'm an introvert. Okay. Not an extrovert. And that's, I was searching for that, that you're, word. You're introvert, right. I get earlier. it. Yeah. And um, I was just thinking, I was like, it was killing me because I, I just <laughs> had a brain fart there. So, so, um, so being an introvert, is it hard for you to, is it hard for you to get out on tour? Like, is it hard for you to play or do, or is it, is that, cause there is that thing where a lot of artists are introverts and the only place they really feel at home is on stage when they're performing. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's, that's me. I'm like, I'm that person being on stage is just like my home, you know, it feels yeah. great. Um, I, I do enjoy being around everybody, but then I, I, I burn out and I, I do on tour. Like I have to go away and like find a coffee shop or sure. whatever it is and just be alone. Like I just I, have to. I think every, every band is like that to a certain degree, whether they yeah. want to admit it or not. I think the idea of, you know, going out there and being a, you know, a band of brothers and sisters and, 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 you know, yeah. but at one point it's like, if I fucking hear your voice again, I'm going to want to you know, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. wanna punch you in the face. Yeah. And that's normal. I mean, you know, you're living in a, such close quarters when you're, in, when you're a musician, you know, if you're not living in, you know, in a van, you're living in something that's a tube, like you're, you're always like this going by each other. Right. Um, you're eating together. You're sleeping in the same places. A lot of time, depending on what budgets are, you're, you're bunking yeah. up in rooms. So there's yeah. a lot of like, I hear you. I remember showing up to venues. Some kid would be waiting outside with his car, excited to see us. And I'd be like, <laughs> Hey man, is there a comic shop near here? And they'd be like, yeah. I'm like, how about you take me and I buy you lunch? And they'd be like, 
okay. Whoa, so, yeah, so, yeah. And I'm sure you've done s- similar stuff. Yeah, totally. You know, and it's just like, yeah. So I mean, in general, I I love the whole thing. Like, I love the 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 day of the show, like prepping and doing sound check and seeing the other bands that are playing. And then, but then there's a point where I just need to like disappear. And then I come back at night in the evening and I'm ready for it and I'm stoked for it. But, um, and days off, I generally, a lot of times I just like to be by myself, you know, like some of the guys in the band, like they couldn't even imagine being alone for like four minutes. Like, Mm. you know, like, so like on a day off, they're going to go see a movie or go see something or whatever, where I might just be like, I'm out like peace, you know, and just like go, go my own way and find my own thing to do. And it's, and the great thing about traveling when you are in a band and, and this goes back to, you know, hitting cities and places you want to hit that you haven't been to. The greatest thing about traveling in a band is that you're always showing up. It's like a double-sided coin because you show up where people are excited to see you. And there are a lot of people that would be more than happy to bring you places. And you kind of got the keys to the city, but you're there for six hours. And Right. So, and that's right. the one thing w- which is great about traveling when you're in a band because th- there's so many doors that'll open for you, but you don't have enough time to to go through. Them. Well, I always consider touring like it's like a sampler plate. Like you, it's so you, so good. It's like going to I exactly, it. yeah. Because yeah. it's like you know, you're like, oh shit, this place seems like it's really cool. I don't have enough time here. Maybe I saw this one cool aspect of it, and then it's like, all right, add this one to like the list. Like I want to spend a day here or depending on the city, like if it's like Munich, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm going to come spend a week here or whatever. Have there been places that you've discovered that ended up becoming vacation spots for you or spots where you spent more time after? Yeah. Well, oh, definitely. You know, like I've, especially kind of what happens for me. Well, yeah. Like for example, like we did the run in Germany and it ended in Northern Germany. And so I saw that, you know, I could take a train in a, an hour and a half train to Amsterdam. Right. So after we finished, I went to Amsterdam for a couple of days and I, I tended to, to do it that way, you know, where I I've been to a place, but not had a lot of time there. So especially like um, if we're going to go somewhere far away, you know, like whether it's, uh, you know, uh, Pacific Rim or, you know, whether like, you know, I'm going to go into Sydney five days early, you know, or, yeah. or after the tour ends, stay in melbourne you know or something like that or um yeah so you know we're we're touring in europe i'm gonna go to venice for three days before we start you know like that kind of thing i i do that oh and almost like every tour as long as here's a little sunlight as long (laughs) as um as long as time permits, you sure. know, sometimes you like if it's a new record, you're performing, you need a lot of practice, you're working on a new show there. You have to be home to prep for the show, you know, so a lot of times that'll come after the tour ends. Right. But I mean, it's nice that you carve that time out for yourself because a lot of musicians, they don't even think of it. A lot of people don't think about taking enough time for themselves. Just just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I just can't imagine like part of the reason I wanted to be in a band was like to go to incredible places and see incredible things. So for me, I'm like, fuck, we did it. Like we're, we're, um, you know, like I'm, I'm going to, you know, Moscow, like, fuck, I'm going to stay. Like, I want to see what it has to offer. And um, so I've kind of done that. Like my pretty much that started for me when we started going overseas as a band, when, when we got out of North America. Um, So Album came out January 6th. Um album, yeah. number, album number 13. So you're you're obviously going to be full into promoting this new record. What can people expect from this that would differ from the other 12? Or would it fall in line with 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 the rest of the catalog? Well, what I like a lot about Anti-Flag as a band and what we've been able to do is, you know, just a lot of older bands and and it's no rub on them. And here I, I was kind of given this as a rub on David Bowie, but like a lot of bands kind of play their their set based on like a, a lo- sort of like what made them popular, you know. Sure. Um, sure. 
what we've been lucky enough to do with the anti-flag is there's always like a couple of songs that connect and almost like bring in a new audience since the band is, has started. And like, so for like the last, I would say like six to eight years, when you look at our set list, like it's half songs from the last three or four records. Right. And I'm really grateful for that. Like, and and so I think that you can expect when you come to see us, you're going to hear newer songs, you know? And a lot of times, like what amazes me is like some of those songs, like whether it's American Attraction or um, uh, Hey Conquers All, like some of those songs, they're the Brandenburg Gate, like they're the biggest songs in the set. Yeah. So I'm really just grateful that people have been open to hearing our new stuff and like, you know, that it's still connecting with people. Like, you know, we were talking about, you know, songs coming out, like just as far as like with the new record, like the first song we released now, um, Laugh, Cry, Smile, Die. It's sort of like right now, it's one of the biggest songs in the whole set, which is really amazing to me that like we put a song out and it's connected. And uh, I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. And it's nice when you see bands, um, I guess in your, in your genre, um, I don't want to pigeonhole you, but if you get a you know, bands like, like you guys that have been around for a while, but are still continuing to put out records, like a, a band I can think of is uh, like rise against like rise against are able to yeah, t- consistently put out new music with new songs that connect. Yeah. And uh, same thing. You go to a rise against set, uh, show and in the set you're hearing stuff from the last few records and you're like, but this fits. It makes sense, you know? Right, right. And it's like, it. it you're right, it does fit. And it's it, it just slides in there. And I think a lot of times, too, like, especially with a band like Rise Against, it's on the radio. They start playing a song that you didn't even realize you knew. And then you're like, oh, shit, I know this one. Yeah, this is a good song, you know? And we grew up, we grew up on radio. Uh, we grew up on, you know, radio being the, being one of the, you know, whether, whether it be, uh, college radio you listen to, whether it be uh, commercial radio, radio was the was the vehicle to get new music. Um, so the power of radio in a market, you see it. Yeah. No matter what, no matter what anybody wants to say, you know, I know satellite came and it was going to take over everything, but people still listen to the radio. People still put on local radio and it, and it makes the difference. And I remember when we started playing Brandenburg Gate um, at the station I work at in Montreal, Okay. Um, it made a huge difference for you guys yeah. in terms of yeah. like just brand, you know, brand, uh, recognizable, well, you know, band name association, whatever you want to yeah. call it. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I don't, can't remember the word I'm, I'm having my, uh, my <laughs> introspect, my, my introvert moment, but basically yeah. it, it really, really <laughs> helps with getting the name out there. And I, I, I see the power of radio and market. So I'm sure when you go to a, a market that has been playing a song or a single, um, it's it, you've got to see the difference because there's there's just people that might not have been at the last show that are there. It, it, it's actually kind of hard to believe. Like, and we especially like our this this record was top ten in Germany, which we've never had before. Yeah, like you you realize that there's a a whole new audience that I never thought would be there. Yeah. Um, and especially like a young audience, like it's kind of interesting, like our audience is a little different in different parts of the world, but because we are an older band in some places, you know, it's, it's a much older crowd, but there are other parts, other places, especially in somewhere like Germany, where you have songs on the radio yeah. where the audience, it's going to be a mix, you know, yeah. like there's going to be the young kids up front and the older heads in the back and where, where I hang out when I go to a show. <laughs> you know? yeah. I'm right there with you. Yeah. But, but that's really fun. And I, you know, I, I appreciate that the old heads like me stuck with us and that, you know, we're still able to to connect with the younger audience. Um, and we have that in North America, too, not as much as we do, say, like in Europe, but we we still have that. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate that because I think that the music you find when you're young, you know, that's the music probably that really stays is, with you forever. Yeah. Stays with you forever. Absolutely. So that is um so it's special to me that when when we connect with younger people, just knowing that, oh wow, this is gonna be really important to them years later. Absolutely. And there's something to be said about that, you know, that sweet spot from when you're say 13 to like 17 or 18. That's the music yeah. is that that the stuff that I listened to as a teen, you know, w- when I got to speak to some of those artists in my later years when I was doing this, yeah, uh, you know, I would talk to someone who would be absolutely huge now, but then I would get a guy like, guy like Peter Hook, 
yeah. um, and get a chance to ch- chat with him. People are like, why are you so excited? I'm like, you don't understand. He's right. a bass player from New Order and from Joy Division. Like that was my whole life when I was 15. Yeah, I'm so there with you. And I, especially for people like you and I, because we both, you know, played in bands, touring bands, like music wasn't just like something we liked a lot. It was like, you're living it, you're breathing oh, it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I think like, you know, like my sister, I love her to death. Like she'll never, music will never be as important to her as it is to me, yeah. you know? And like, because now books are are her music, you know. Sure, so it's like, sure. but but I think for people like us, when we have that opportunity later to just interact with those people, I mean, we had one time where we um got to hang out with Paul Stanley from Kiss, and I wow. was just like, yeah, mind, mind blown, blown. <laughs> you know. And he was so cool, like, yeah. and he was great to us, honestly. Like, he was just so cool, which made it made it even that much better because, like. You know, the, there is a fear of meeting your early musical influences or somebody that you loved. And, you know, are they going to be decent? Are they going to be cool or whatever? And, um, yeah, just like, wow, man, I hung out with that dude whose records I grew up on as a kid. And yeah. um, that was just like such a great experience. And that's the thing, you know, records, vinyl, um, when you're young and you don't have telephones and you don't have all these other distractions, yeah, all yeah. you've got is the record cover. So, right. you know, you've got the cover that you flip over and then you've got the insert. And if you're lucky enough, it's not a clear bag. It's, it's a printed one and all the liner notes are in there and all the lyrics yeah. are in there. And, all, and yeah. so, you know, you know, when you see names like, uh, you know, Ted Jansen from, you know, mastering or Howie Weinberg and all these names just become right. these things. So, if, you know, right. uh, I, I I had uh, Eddie Kramer on the show and people were like, why? What's so cool? I mean, dude, Eddie Kramer, like he recorded everybody. I mean, he's the Hendrix guy. And, and it's, it's those nerdy things that when you are a kid and you are looking at liner notes and you're looking at albums and you know, you're, yeah, because that's, that's all you have. That's right? all you have. So yeah. when you're looking, when yeah. you're turning over love gun and you're, you know, you're looking at these pictures of Paul and his makeup or whatever, and you get to meet him. And I know the effect it's nuts. It's not. Yeah, we, we we talk about that a lot um, w- in the band where, you know, um, I know like our bass player, he came into the band after we had a couple records already made. And um, he always talks about just like looking, you know, he found a Dead Kennedys record and he's like, wow, this is cool. Like, where did this come from? He didn't have the Internet to check and figure it out. And, sure. You know, seeing like, okay, you know, who did the art, who produced it, all that kind of stuff. And then trying to follow that thread back to like who influenced those people. Yeah. And then, you know, like, oh, well, if 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 they influenced this person who did this thing, it's really cool. I want to find everything that influenced them. And that was sort of how you did it in the old days. Oh yeah. And it's and it's and it's crazy to think that, you know, you're heading into 30 years that you you guys are that band for somebody. Yeah, right, right, which is like wild. Um not what I expected, but that it's true and it's you know, it, but that's I'm grateful for that. Like that's that's super cool. How do you handle that when someone comes up to you and says, you know, like dude, you changed my life? Yeah, well, first of all, like I'm genuinely flattered. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, cuz for, you know, I've always had a hard time taking any kind of compliment like that. The the, yeah. the first thing I would do would have that, you know, that self-deficating humor where it's like, oh, man, sure. you're a bad taste. And then someone told yeah. me, just smile and say thank you. You know what? Honestly, <laughs> that's how I do it now. Like, because, yeah. because you know, and and now, like, I'm going to be doing exactly what you're talking about. But, like, I, I don't feel special in that way. But I, I've been through it enough to now understand that, sure. like, okay, yeah, what we created is really meaningful to a number of people. So, you kind of just have to be like, oh, gosh, thank you, you know, because that's like, it's nice to know. And then, and then just like being curious about like, what, what part of the band, what did you find? What was important to you? You know, what, what was the thing? And, and, and always relating the fact that I had the same thing, you know, I had it with Joe Strummer, you know, I had it with The Clash, you know, I had it with Henry Rollins, you know, oh, yeah. like, um, so I, I totally get that. Um, so it's, it's not foreign to me. And, you know, I think for us, a lot of the time it comes back to like somebody, the, this, the, the story that always blows my mind and believe this, believe me, like 
I, it, we get this just so much more often than I expected. And I guess I could turn this into a little a bit of a long-winded story, but I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll make it a medium length story. Cool. But, you know, when we wrote Dive of the Government, especially for me writing the song, it was basically inspired by the fact that we had a, Pittsburgh was like a Rust Belt town yeah. with no future for a lot of us. We were, my friends and I, we were poor kids and there was not really a ticket out of town and there wasn't a lot going on in town. Mm. And and that's probably a lot of the reason that we started a punk band. It was like, just get out of town. You know, like how, what are we going to do to get out of town? Um, a lot of guys turned to the military because that was a chance, you know, to yeah. try something else. And it was even just a job, you know, it was like a career. A lot of us weren't going to go to university. It wasn't an option. So all of a sudden the first Gulf war happened. And a lot of our friends who were just trying to get a new career were all of a sudden going over to fight in the desert. Yeah. And that's not really what they had joined up for. And, and we couldn't see the value of going over and fighting in Iraq. So that was really where the song was inspired by. But for me, like as a naive younger person, I thought, well, if I write this anti-war song and people hear it, then we won't have wars, you know. Sure. And of course, that was just a really naive way of looking at how, you know, problems are solved. But what I did find out years later is that people heard that song and it influenced them. Right one person at a time the world is changing you yep. know so you know years later we meet people and say dude i was going to join the army after 9 11 and i just it, i just happened to hear your band and then i started listening to some of the things you were saying and i changed my mind and you know i ended up in the peace corps you know or <laughs> yeah. like i became a human rights lawyer or you know there's like so many of those stories like it's wild. Like we'll have public defenders who come to our show and they're like, I'm a public defender today because you're banned. And like, <laughs> so that to me is like crazy inspiring. And it, and it brings full circle, like the goal of the band in the beginning, which was to make the world a better place and change right. it. It did like it worked, it, but sure. it didn't happen the way we thought it would. Well, you know? and, and, and that's, you know, that's the, the nativity of, uh, of, of youth. You know, you think, right you have these grandiose ideas, but the, at the end of the day, it's, it's what you do with the immediate people around you. You know, you're, those yeah. little things, those little acts of kindness, holding a door open for somebody, you know, treating someone with respect at the coffee yeah. shop, not like shit, you know, asking yeah. someone how they're doing, checking in on your friends. It's all those little things make a difference. And and of course, when you're a musician, you are making differences. Uh, you're making huge differences to a lot of people's lives, but you might not see it because you kind of live in a in a vacuum in a way, unless you go out and you start touring and you hear it, but it's great that you're able to take it and listen to it and, um, and let it wash over you because it's important, you know, when you, and especially when you're a band that, that has a bit of meat to them, um, in, in terms of substance. And it's not just, you know, you're not, just, it's not just angst. It's, it's there, there's, there's some, there's a lot, there's a lot of layers in the music. Cool. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. And I, and I, I also, I, I agree with you too. in the fact that like, we have bad days and we have days where you're like, is this really making a difference? You know? And then you meet somebody like, oh yeah, it is actually. It is. You know? It so, is definitely. So it is actually like a nice, like it, it is reaffirming and it, it, because everybody has those days where you're like, does my life matter? Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. Like, I know. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you are. Right. And, um, so, so it is nice. And it, and it reminds me that like, you know, there on the days where I don't like my life or I don't like what's going on in the band, you know, which honestly, like from the perspective of whether I like the band or not, I love the band, you know, sure. but, um, you know, when you're having that bad day, it's nice to have heard those things on a, on a related note. I'll share with you that um, you, you just got me thinking about this. I was watching, there's a really interesting documentary about um, a week that was spent together by uh, uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu, who was from South Africa and helped lead uh, the anti-apartheid movement in the 90s. So there's a documentary with where he and the Dalai Lama, they get together and they hang out for a week. Wow. And... <laughs> yeah. And they, and they just, they talk, you know, and it's, it's filmed and oh, um, amazing. yeah. And it, it's a really, really interesting, a lot of the issues that they talk about, but one of the issues that they're trying to explore is, is, is joy. Yeah. And um, so, 
but what they do is they actually like bring a scientist in to talk about um, analyzing sort of the testimony that the two of them are giving and the, the the ideas that they have about how to make the world better. And one of the things that the scientist talks about, which I think is really interesting, when they they can do these like tangible tests on people to see what chemicals are being produced in their body and then see whether they're they're uh, whether these people are happier or mm -hmm. have a more fulfilling life. Um, but one of the things that that the Dalai Lama and and Desmond Tutu talk about, is when you're out in the world, when you're giving to other people and you're basically being selfless and you're being thoughtful and kind to others, uh, they found that those people like have higher dopamine levels, that those people just have happier lives, yep. more fulfilling lives. Mm -hmm. And the science actually backs that up. So it's pretty interesting. I think that kind of plays into what you and I are talking about and that human interaction and that human connection that when you're giving to people and you were saying like, Hey, when you check in on your friends, when you yeah. make sure people are doing okay, like that, that kind of thing where you're just not thinking about yourself first. You're not being a selfish prick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, yo, just don't be an asshole, don't you know, be, like but that's, that's, cool. that's, that's what I always tell people. I mean, just kind, be kind and, and, and right. think of other people, you know, I'm, I've yeah, been, I love I've been, that you were like, hold a door for somebody, like say, thank you. Like it's little honestly, things, but, it, I, it, you never know how that's going to lift a person up. And when we talk about, and I think you probably would even like, I bet you experienced this on tour. Sometimes like that shit, like you're just having that day and somebody just gives you that smile and it's like, Makes oh, all the cool. I feel yep. a lot better now, you know? Yeah. And, and I, and I, what I love is when you're in a situation, you know, here's a great example. You show up and the guy, uh, the sound guy or whoever's loading the, you know, the, 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 the local crew guy is just miserable. And you say something to him and you know, that just makes him fucking laugh. Yeah. You say like, wow, you're a real miserable prick today. I wouldn't <laughs> want to get on your bad side. And then they laugh and then right. when you can break that. It's just the nicest thing. And, uh, but, I, but I know, you know, I've been, I've been in recovery for, I've been sober 30 years. Wow. Um, congratulations. Thank you. And, and it's funny because that's pretty much what I practice is just like not, you know, the, the 12 step programs are like that where you're, yeah. you're pretty much thinking of other people. You know, and yeah. at the end of the day, when you think of other people, you're not thinking about your own shit and it gets you out right. of yourself for a minute. And, and sure. I think the world we live in now, it's so easy to get isolated and so easy to be in your own thoughts and not think of the others and, and human yeah. interaction. We need that. And I think that was one of the yeah. biggest problems that a lot of people had during the, the, you know, the couple of years of pandemic was not having that. Like we need that as a, as, as a people, um, right? at least right. I do. I know I do. Um, well, yeah. And, and luckily for me, like, you know, I say like, okay, I'm like a recluse and like I'm introverted. So it, it was easier for me, but I wasn't totally alone. You know, I was dating somebody at the time I, we lived together. I, I was looking after my dad, you know, so I had, I didn't have a lot of people, but I had people, but you had people you know, where, right. where I have other people who didn't have anybody. And, um, you know, like talk about checking in on your friends, you know, like just because we know people from all over the place. And like, for example, like a friend in Hungary. And when we finally ran into each other last summer, I was like, how's the pandemic? And she's like, I didn't talk to anybody one time for like three weeks, you know? And wow. I, it just like, I just like that hurt my heart so mm -hmm. much to like a lot of people didn't have anybody. And that's just brutal. I know, know? I know, I know. Yeah. Um, I'm really, really glad we got a chance to connect and chat yeah. today. And, uh, and you still got my number. So still, we'll work <laughs> much next time, dude. We'll work much. Y'all hit me up. <laughs> right behind me, if you see where my finger's pointing, um, that's an old, that's an ex, that's an outtake from the damage cover. Oh, wow. I'll, I'm going to pull it down to show you because you, you mentioned Rollins. Let me just grab it. So, so just so, so you know, damage is like one of the most like influential punk records for me ever. So yeah. that's Culver. Crazy. Ed Culver signed that. I don't know if you can see it, but it's no. down there. So it's an Ed Culver wow. print from a, yeah. So I, when that's you said, so cool. I love Rollins and I have a, my wife and I, we, we bought this place and we converted it into a, it's like, it was a duplex and we just turned it into a single house in the city. We did a lot of it ourselves. And my buddy's a welder and he welded our fence and in the front, because I have your number, I'll text you a picture in the front. We have a black flag. Fence. He's like, what do you want to put on the front of the fence? And I'm like, can you do the bars logo? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's great when people walk by, there'll be some kids that'll walk Sick. by and they'll get it. Yeah. And other people that are like, nice design. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Oh, it's amazing. I love it. No, that's so cool. And you know, that record, 
is was like one of the biggest it's one of my like earliest punk record finds yeah. for me and like the guitar playing of greg ginn and the vocals like just it's a perfect record for me like in a lot of ways yeah same and uh and it's and and i love rollins's stance it helped me a lot with um getting past the the fact that i was kind of not really doing music the way i was before i love the way he'll say hey listen I feel goofy, you know, putting on my little shorts and going up and screaming liar. Like I'm over 50. Like I don't need to do that. And I love his, I love the fact that he's able to say, I'm going to just do something different. And that, that really helped me switch gears into my career and not do music and be able to, to be that guy who, who does this now. And, and I love yeah, this as much and, and I'm okay. Like, you know, well, every once in a while I'll get up and I'll do it and it's fun. And I know I can't, I still can, but it's okay to get off and go, it's a young man's game. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, you're right about so, that. So my, my hat's off to you that you're that you're out there and you're still touring and and you guys are Cheers. still doing it. You know, it's uh it's commendable. I appreciate it. I mean, cool, and man. I love what you do. So you you you're doing something new and it's totally you do it great. I appreciate it, and it's uh, and I'm really really glad we got a chance to chat. And the next time you're in Montreal, I'll hit you up for sure. Sick. I love it. All right, man. Continued success, bud. You too, buddy. Peace. Take care. Yeah, you guys seemed like old friends. It was a real, it's a real nice combo. You know, every time I think about Anti Flag and shout out to everybody I knew when I was like 18, 19, 20, yeah. every week we'd go to Fuffs. And Fuffs mm-hmm. was like this place to go that you were waiting until you're 18. And, you know, arguably sometimes you just go there in the middle of the day in hopes that you'd be able to get in as a teen. But uh, Fafoons on a Friday night, that's what Anti Flag's music reminds me of that whole time, that whole time of being young and interested and in being in a bar every Friday night, you know? Yeah. 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 No, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I have those mem- memories from Foo Fun when Kevin and I first started Slaves on Dope. Do you see, do you see that dog coming in and out of here? She's, I think she wants, I think we, we're going to have to have June on the podcast soon because she's just keeps jumping up and down. Now she's looking for food. Hey, get down. Anyways, it reminds me of what you're talking about. It reminds me of the time when Kevin and I would, um, would go to Black Monday. Uh, at Fofun Electric, and we just go and we dance, and it was right around the time, the early '90s, when House of Pain, Jump Around was popular, um, all that stuff, all that music. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And if Anti Flag brings back those memories, and that that those are good memories from your childhood. I feel they make me feel thin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lose weight with Anti Flag; they'll make you feel thin. Um, but uh, I really appreciate uh, Justin being on the show. Really great dude, and. Um, Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we, we really appreciate all the support. Um, please like, subscribe, and uh, tell us in the comments who you'd like us to chat with and share it around to your friends. We're uh, we're very, very grateful to have you along with us on the journey. We're really having fun with this, and we've got a lot of stuff planned. As it starts to get a little bit warmer here in Canada, um, the spring happens, more stuff rolls through town. We're even talking about maybe starting to do some of this stuff in person. You and I are going on a um, one of Jason and Ryan's big, amazing adventures soon, and we're going to be documenting that. So we'll have some different stuff up here soon. Um, I- I'm looking forward to our road trip episode. This is going to be pretty crazy. It, rem- it's, it makes me kind of funny. Like Whenever something crappy would happen to us on the road, that's the time we didn't turn on the cameras like it would have been interesting to you know us running out of gas and panicking and screaming and that that would have been good on camera you know yeah (laughs) i know i know i know well we're gonna have to we're gonna have to document our our big crazy road trip that we're doing and uh and of course you know you and i are involved we work on a lot of projects together not only the podcast but we work on all the comic cons together so um, we've got a lot of stuff coming our way and maybe we'll be able to bring some of that stuff into uh, Rockman Power Hour and and uh, kind of, you know, a Frankenstein it a bit. But thank you to all of you uh, who are joining us on this journey. We appreciate it. Thanks to Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Thank you, of course, to Studio House Designs. Um, They're the best t-shirt company in the world. Go check them out at studiohousedesigns.com. And uh, yes, of course, Heartbeat, use our promo code Rockman 20 and you'll get 20% off your entire order. Thanks to AKG microphones. It's cold in Canada, but it can be hot in your mouth. Oh man. It's so wrong. <laughs> and uh, thanks to our producer, Julia Kajerski, my co-host Ryan stick and to all of you. And we'll see you next time on the Rockman power hour. <laughs>